She is with Mothers Against Drunk Driving. She's gonna share a few words with her, and she absolutely deserves our respect. And the greatest way we can give anyone a true sign of respect is by giving them our absolute attention. So I thank you for giving that to her. Please welcome Ms. Teague Henderson. I got a knock on the door. I live in Horseshoe Bay. I got a knock on the door June the 10th of 2003. There was a DPS officer standing there very much at attention. He said, Terry Tig, my heart dropped because I knew that wasn't good. He said, I'm sorry to inform you that your son, Justin, has been killed in a car wreck on Highway 71. At that moment, all my senses completely shut down. I can't tell you another thing that I'm going to say. But all I could do was scream and cry and say, no, not my baby, not my son. This is not supposed to happen to me. And I knew at that moment that I was never going to see my son alive again. My son was the car in the pasture in the car that he was killed in. The driver, Clay, had been drinking. Justin wasn't. Why wasn't he driving? Did he think he was invincible, that nothing would ever happen to him? Yeah, did I? Most definitely. I always talk to my kids, know who you're getting in the car with, better yet, take your own car. Mommy, they were coming back from Austin, and Lady followed them for 20 miles and said, Clay was driving fine, not a problem. And then all of a sudden, at the second ranch, the car just does this. Justin's body took the whole impact of that crash. His face took the impact of the windshield. They said there was not a bone in his body that wasn't broken. Clay was severely injured. He almost died of that. They rushed him. They fly-started him to Breckenridge where they had to do brain surgery, releasing pressure on his brain. And Felicia, the other lady that was hit, she never once lost consciousness during this whole ordeal. She said that she looked down and just seen bones protruding out of her body, just covered in blood. She almost died that day. They told her she would never walk again. But you know, she was minding her own business. You know, she didn't deserve that. And I know Clay didn't wake up that morning and say, hey, I'm gonna start drinking and I'm gonna kill Justin. I know he didn't mean to, but it happened when it never had to happen. The DA told us that a Clay was going to be charged with intoxication manslaughter for killing Justin and intoxication assault on Felicia. But he pled guilty to all charges. They handcuffed him. And his mom cries out. And I thought, you know, that is sad. That's sad because all these lives change because of choices not just Clay made that day, but Justin made. And there's two things that Clay said that just broke my heart is if he went to prison, he was going to lose two years out of his life. What's two years out of his life compared to a lifetime without my son? You know what he did the weekend he got out of prison? Clay's coming out party, and Clay is so drunk, he can't stand up, and he says, you know, man, I was way too good looking to be in prison. And I thought, do you not just realize what's happened to you and us? I had never thought about it until that day that Clay has to live with for the rest of his life that he killed Justin. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what that would feel like. I don't want to know what that feels like. You don't want to know what it feels like to be on my side of either. The one thing that I wanted the most after I found out Justin had been killed was his phone. And I had to get that phone because I had to know the last words my son ever heard his mama say to him before he died is that I loved him. And he did. 